Hello, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and I am lucky enough to be at Blackpool Magic Convention 2023. Before we do this, please like, subscribe, and of course, share it if you want, tell people about it, but check out onlinemagic.co. Thanks, Gaz and Steph, for the t-shirt. I'll have some links at some point for those, uh, but onlinemagic.co is my membership site. It's been going for 10 years this year, uh, which is nuts. Uh, I was one of the early, the early adopters of the membership thing, and, uh, and it's still going. 800 videos plus, I think probably more like 900 now, and live sessions every week and special guests most months we had two special guests this month and uh, people like david williamson have been on there andy gladwin uh thing about vanishing ink which is you might be able to see behind me there and uh, anyway i'll stop waffling about that but have a look at onlinemagic.co now yesterday was the first day of the convention i'm doing one of these every day um i didn't hammer it yesterday what i usually do is watch everything i just wanted to walk around and get a feel for things yesterday and the thing about blackpool is you know one of the things I love about it and one of the things that frustrates me about it is that there is so much on so there are crossovers you so you have to make choices of what you see and a big choice I have to make is do I miss things completely because I want to kind of walk around the area I want to walk around the dealers talk to people and catch up with people who I haven't seen for a long time and this year I've decided to do a lot of that which is the joy of these conventions you know when you're when you're of a certain age, you've seen a lot of magic, a lot of lectures, and it's just nice to kind of see those people that you haven't seen for so long. And the vibe here is lovely. You know, I, back in the day when I used to come to Blackpool, I think it was one of the Blackpool conventions that I just went, you know, I'm done, I've had enough. And I kind of went into what I call my wilderness years of kind of, you know, thinking the magic community was terrible and being ter terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, it was more about me than them. And then coming back to it years later and just, it's, it's got the things I loved about Blackpool plus it's changed for me in in the atmosphere not that it was a bad atmosphere but there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and this it just seems to be more tightly put together now a little bit more thought gone into the organization of it and everything is just like Blackpool 2.0 now you know I'm talking about the dealers a lot and it's a weird concept isn't it you come to a convention and be really excited about the dealers hall but of course you know we only see stuff online most of the year there's not many bricks and mortars magic shops so it's really really lovely to connect with the creators that are making the stuff and ask them questions and be able to see what you're getting as well which we can't do online and i think that's fine actually you know i'm having a conversation with no quarter about this last night the fact that when i was a young lad you know you were buying the secret the idea so it was irrelevant what it was but now it, there's a little bit more people kind of want to see the quality of what they're getting so it's a place where we can do that Saying that, you know, and I will be walking around getting footage of some of the dealer stuff because there's some really exciting stuff that I've seen. Lecture-wise, I saw John Allen yesterday. I wanted to see all of John's lecture and actually me and my partner Helen helped him out at the end just uh, being volunteers for his latest trick. But that was it. it was, I haven't seen John lecture. You know? I've long, known John for a long time and I've always talked about his products. I like his products. They're all workable. He's a worker. He knows his stuff. And, you know, way back in the day with the bookie release of Vanishing Ink, I really loved. And even before that, Spectators Don't Exist. I think that's what it's called, the DVD. So it's great stuff. And it was a really solid lecture. There's so much in there. It was like a proper lecture. You know, it was like a proper lecture where you could take stuff away that you didn't have to buy. But if you wanted to buy the stuff, there was that as well. There was theory in there, the idea of empowering the person on stage with you. He talked about why he didn't like the, the paper balls over the head trick, which I actually disagree with. I love it. But I could see what his argument was. And he's got a beautiful version of a torn and restored napkin, which uses the same idea, but empowers the child that you are, or the person that you're doing the trick to. And as soon as I saw that, and he talked about it before, but I hadn't seen it, I just thought it's such a lovely thing. And you could, I think you could also sort of add to that as well. Uh, but it was, he also talked about this, it's all the little things I like. He, the idea of giving a Sharpie to a kid and then go, you've been so great on stage. And, and the kid going out and kind of getting autographs. Yeah, it's, it's full of little bits like that, plus the great tricks. I've written them down, because um, I'll, never, I'll never remember them all, because there's so many of them, but the tournament's still uh, napkin. It's got this lovely paper crane trick. It's not called paper crane trick, but I can't remember what it's called, which is a wedding you do, like a diary trick, but it's done with lucky charms on cars instead of playing cards. And he also talks a lot about, you know, one of their opportunities to do a card tricks, but without playing cards. Um, 
the Cardin balloon, which he takes Danny Garcia's pressure and adds to that and does this lovely move. I was going to take you a bit of the, uh, the method there, but I won't because it's available in his lecture notes. But it's a lovely move about like pulling a, a card from a, from a deck that's encased in a balloon, which I thought was really lovely. Great, great ambitious card stuff, which he wasn't teaching the ambitious card routine, but talking about writing a word instead of a name and all the improvisation that can come out of that. Blimey. Um, Kingback, you've got to check out Kingback, one of John's early releases, which is brilliant. The Paragon deck, again, John's clear sort of destination box, which came out many years ago, which is knacky, but man, when he did it, it looks great. And he's got this new thing, which is wonderful, that's what it's called, which uses a similar kind of principle. It's actually a lot easier than Paragon deck, but uses the card folded in the key box, which I thought was a key fob, which is great. Uh, and the, the heart trick, anniversary heart. So if you think of anniversary waltz, but without cars, but with, with these plastic hearts with the spectators' names on, and that's where me and Helen went up and helped him out with that, which is, again, a lovely trick. And he's got his um, system, this, this system, oh, what's it called? can't remember, sorry, John, but I'm going to do a whole review on it as well. But actually, the display system he's got, which displays Rubik's Cubes, cards, all these things. It was quite funny, because every time he put something on it, he went, oh, that's all, looks nice, or oh, what a great idea. And you know, you knew it was coming up, to a, coming up to a very lovely and a very subtle pitch at the end. And actually, it was lovely to see John at the end talk about what it means to him to lecture there. It's been 20 odd years since he's lectured. Or, or maybe he's never, anyway, long, long, long time since he's lectured, if ever in Blackpool, um, but it was great to see. So the evening shows, the, what happens in Blackpool is that you get your ticket to the gala, which is on your lanyard. lanyard. You get the same seat every evening. So that's what's good to get in early with your early bird tickets and stuff, because then you'll get a, a decent seat allocated. There's no really bad seats, but when you're up in the gods, it can be problematic. And I'll talk about that in a minute. It's going to become my catchphrase, isn't it? I'll talk about that. In <laughs> what? <laughs> what a rubbish catchphrase. It's because I always say it, if you haven't watched many of these, and never usually talk about it in a minute. But anyway... Uh, Mike Caveney and friends. I'm looking at notes here because, uh, I, you know, it's, it's early and, um, and there's a lot to say. The way it works, as I was going to say, is that you get your gala show ticket and then there are satellite shows. So before and after the gala show, there are different shows and you get a separate ticket for that and you have to choose what one you go to. So Mike Caveney's show was him, Tina Lena, Artem, who won Manipulation Fism and... Christopher Hart and Guy Hollingworth, how can I forget that? I've never seen Guy on stage, oddly enough. I've seen him do close-up. It was a lovely show that, for me, the room was problematic and I don't really know why. First of all, I kind of sat down and it was a uh, yeah, very race stage, all that. I f was quite near the back, but I always choose to do that and I thought I'd be okay. But the sight lines were a bit off. They weren't terrible, but there's something with the lighting, it was all well lit, but I couldn't see the manip stuff at that distance very well, and I usually can. Now, whether I'm just getting over can't see, and I've got to start admitting to myself that I need glasses, but... So for me, the, the lighting was good, but it wasn't there, but the, there was something about the sound. The sound was, was cl crystal clear, but it, there was something missing in it. There was no depth to it, so it felt odd. It felt a bit radio-like, and I, and I kind of couldn't... And again, it, it wasn't that you couldn't hear, but there was something about I couldn't connect with the show as much as I do, especially when I'm watching people like Mike and Tina, who I just adore, and I've, I've never kind of felt that thing of, I'm loving this content, this sh content, content, is it? What Mike and Tina does in content. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving your content, Mike and Tina le legends that you are. Um, I <laughs> But I've seen them so many times, and I just this time it, it felt like the kind of wrong venue. It felt like a little bit of a kind of convention, which it is. It's a convention centre. Saying that, it's better. It's a decent venue. But so Mike was doing his his uh, cut his gypsy thread with toilet roll, which is great. Is all his classic routines. The um, the hoop with the coffee. That's not called that, is it? Sorry again. Uh, and Tina did Mr. Motman, which, I, again, I don't know if I always get the official title of that act, but it's just, I never tire of it. And actually, I got quite, I welled up a little bit watching it yesterday. I think it's because I was watching it with Helen, and I was probably a bit hungover in the evening. Um, but it was, I just get quite moved by that act. It's lovely. Again, I won't go right into it, but if you get a chance to see it and you haven't seen it, please do. If, you, if you're at a convention and you've got a choice of shows, if you get to see Tina and might do their stuff, do. Guy, there was a lot of manipulation and, and um, Mike 
mention this at the beginning, but that's all right. It was all, it was all very different styles, and it was actually quite nice to see different, the same genre of magic done in different styles. So Guy Hollingworth did this really beautiful, slow manipulation act with a hat, and he had this lovely callback at the end, and he mentions getting a hat out of a rabbit at the beginning. Very classic, very clipped, very stylish, and I love that very sort of vaudevillian, which I love. But the, the best thing for me was this ball routine that he'd done. You know, I've seen his cards work a lot, but I hadn't seen him doing his um, manipulation billiard ball routine. And it was, I've heard about it, and it was so lovely to see. Just three billiard balls vanish one at a time uh, into a silk and then reappear. And I just thought, I loved the, the pace of it. But again, the pace was perfect, but <laughs> for that venue, it felt, I, I, can, I just wanted to to be in a kind of more into I don't know, it's not intimate, but you know what I mean. Christopher Hart was, again, I haven't seen him work before, because you know, I've been to hundreds of conventions, but he, again, to see someone that's got such a tight act, he had lovely card manipulation, but he did this, he, he was the part of the hand uh, thing in the Adams Family movies. So he's got that kind of mime physicality to him, and he did this, this routine with a hand, which was, it was a couple of moments where I kind of went, oh, that's a bit odd, but really magical. And to see that kind of stuff done really well with a spirit cloth on a hand and, and to not see it just as a comedy routine, but seen as a comedy skilled routine that look, at the end, it's like you couldn't work out why the hand, how the hand could be doing that. It's really well animated and again showed that his, his physicality was, was is clearly someone that's studied that side of it rather than just, you know, here's a load of car manipulation. And there's none of that really. It was all. It, there was none of like bang 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 coming it was just it all had a kind of feel to it that wasn't just look how clever I am and then we go on to Artem who won FISM and I mean the story of him sort of coming over from Russia and not being able to go back was incredible but it, basically he came over he couldn't go home so he entered a load of competitions <laughs> it's just great and then spent a week at the Magic Castle performing there but it's one of the best manipulation acts I've ever seen. It was, again, mime. His mime was incredible. The isolations he was doing with the cards when they would arrive, they would be right in this, you know, the bank, they're there to the music. And then, I'm not going to go into the act because I don't want to ruin it, but it was just surprise after surprise, this thing with the ball and the hat, again, the slowness of the ball moving around the hat and vanishing. It was nothing rushed. And then by the end, everybody was just on their feet. It was absolutely incredible. Get to see it. Try and see it if you can, and I'm not going to give anything away. Because if I'd have known or seen it on YouTube and stuff, it wouldn't have been the same. And I think that's one of the bad things. We, we kind of, we, we were spoiled, but we need that freshness of going into an act sometimes of not knowing what to expect. So again, lovely, lovely show. People on the feet. Everybody had a great time. But for me, the atmosphere wasn't there. And I think the audience have got something to do with that as well. I mean, I did notice around me that people weren't engaging from the start. And that wasn't because of the sound and the audio or any of that stuff. It was because they were just a bit tired and nobody was, I was thinking, come on, look, you know, they, they were, it was a kind of muted audience as well. And I think as, as magicians, sometimes we can be if we're not careful. And I think we have to really, you know, try and watch it as, as a lay person and give the feedback to the performers that they would get from a non-magician's audience. So it's starting to get busy now. People are starting to come in. So I'm going to bang through the gala show, which was, well, I suppose it was the second gala show. Kevin James and Friends. If you don't know Kevin James' stuff and you're new to magic, do check out what he does. I saw him with the Illusionists show, actually in Sheffield, which was lovely to see uh, in my hometown. But I've, I've loved everything he's put out into the magic community, from the snowstorm to the bowling ball. That was his, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. And, uh, and the floating rose, which he performed last night, which was so magic. And again, I got a little bit emotional. It was lovely. He's got such a, he's got that really nice way about him, Kevin James, which has got no creepiness to it at all, I don't think. It's just a really nice, warm, you feel comfortable in his company as a host. So the show started off with, and I'm going to read stuff, sorry, uh, Junwoo Park, uh, Carbon Manipulation Act. And when it starts, I was like, oh, it's another manipulation act. But again, with a different energy. And the skill, the stuff he did with sound and music, it, he choreographed it, you know, to the, to the second. So there was a beat to the music and a drum that came out. And then there were sticks instead of cards when the, when the drumming sort of, of the track uh, increased. And I just loved it I, I'm really interested in people that do stuff with sound as well and again it wasn't just like bang 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 cards it was that 
but by the end of it, and it had this kind of, you know, slightly retro feel to it with the sunglasses that would appear and come off. And, you know, I lo- if you're going to do that, commit to it. And it felt like a, such a strong start. It was a wonderful act. And then we had well, a couple of acts that I kind of didn't quite connect with. One, uh, there was reasons. So Adrian Solar, uh, or S- S- is it Soler? I apologise. I haven't looked at the pronunciations. I usually get quite geeky about pronunciations. Um, he had a few technical problems at the beginning, but it was a weird thing. Like when he came on, I thought it was really funny, really strong. And then it, it kind of the, he did a thing with a song, which again I think there were some technical issues and problems that derailed that a little bit. But I was watching from the, the circle, so I wasn't right up at the balcony, but my angles were a little bit off for the illusion that he was doing. So again, that kind of made me oh, it's such a shame because I wanted to. It was a lovely illusion he did. So for me, that part of it didn't really pick up for me and I was I, I kind of felt like that it felt like it was working towards something but I've just thought Mike um, Mike Kevin did say he broke his hand like a week ago and he's performing with a broken hand so that might have been something to do with it but it just started and I was like this is going to be great and then it, it it didn't really pick up for me like I said Anka and Luca uh, Fism winners for Mentalism don't I think again I hadn't seen them before I hadn't heard of what they did they had some really, like when they started, I couldn't work out, there were some really funny jokes that were kind of ironic jokes in there. So I couldn't work out whether they were really committing to the whole thing being ironic. It wasn't. I mean, the mentalism was stunning. It was incredible. But it felt like it could have committed more to that. They, they're such a professional and well put together act. And I can see totally why they won. And just, you know, great characters. The whole thing's brilliant. But I felt that sometimes it was going towards that kind of ironic jokes bit but then it would come back and become a bit more serious and it's like I wanted I kind of wanted it to do one or the other but again a phenomenal act and everybody loved it Rafu which which I thought looked like a kind of long, young version of Bill Malone which I, once I got that in the head I couldn't get out of, uh, out of it but again lovely clowning lovely physicality some brilliant brilliant stuff with linking rings he did this linking ring routine such a great gag I'm not going to ruin it but he, did, he does a crash link gag which I just thought was hilarious. Then he's got this brilliant one. He's he's trying to link and unlink the rings, but they're actually happening with the rings that is still on the stand. That was great. Again, for for an act, it didn't really... I I love bits of it, and bits of it didn't play quite so strongly for me, but the character, and I love good quality clowning, and it was that, you know, great... Someone that's clearly, again, studied the art and knows what he's doing, but for me, it wasn't the strongest of the evening. Ramo and Allegra started off it, illusion act and I had to nip out to the loo because <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd had a glass of wine and I came back and I missed the beginning of it and I went oh it's you know it's classic illusion stuff and then I realized it wasn't and it twisted the whole thing around I love you know I think some of the classic illusion acts are problematic they're slightly misogynist like the whole thing of getting you know the the, the assistant again you know I love it but sometimes it can be done in problematic ways and quite dated ways and this really did something to address that i thought it was really clever really skilled very funny and what an ending i mean i'll just say it's got this gag with a sub trunk and you do it and i was thinking oh they're great they're going to do the sub trunk and then this thing happens and it's really funny you go oh they can't do the sub trunk now and then they kind of did and it was just mind-blowing. It's one of the best illusion acts I've seen in a long time. I'm not an illusion person. I don't really engage with it very easily. I kind of, once someone gets in a box, I kind of know what's going to happen. I'm not putting it down at all. I know this is very, very important to some people. And, you know, there's some great stuff here in this room with illusions. But for me to be that entertained by an illusion act was, was a real joy. And Gate and Bloom, I haven't seen Gate and Bloom on stage for a long time. And I'm a big, big fan. And he was just so funny I'd forgotten a lot of the act <laughs> it really tickled me he does this thing he just says to someone right you need something to do this is a French invention it does nothing and it's just this bit of wood that goes like that and he's winding it up and the guy has to stand there for ages doing this while, while the woman's doing the, uh, the card stuff with Gaten and it's just so funny the way he keeps looking around and going you keep working keep working at that uh, and I, from beginning to end, the, the stuff with the boxing gloves, I know a lot of people, a couple of people said to me, no, it should have finished there, the boxing glove bit at the end didn't, but I, I really like it. I just, I, Gaten's one of those people I could just watch 
reading the telephone book, you know what I mean? He's just so funny, he's kind of the way he kind of walks around the stage and he's got that kind of informality to him. But, you know, he's a wonderful clown gate in Bloom, and just very, very funny, and, a, you know, an incredibly skilled magician, and a master class in taking, you know, a card trick that is a simple, really, torn corner card trick, and creating this amazingly funny routine out of it that, you know, again, it's one card trick, but I just, I just adored it, and I, I could have just sat and watched it for another hour. And then Kevin James did that routine, his, you know, the, the routine he's famous for when they cut a person in half and then it just, it, talking about illusions, that's the other one that I just love. It's a masterclass, not only in, in that kind of illusion, but in timing and quiet and waiting and patience. There's a moment in it when there's the person's on stage, half of the person's on stage, and there's just this kind of, you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And, I, and you're watching nothing happen. They've just got a heartbeat in the music, but you're just transfixed by it. And, and I could have sat and waited for another 10 minutes with nothing happening. And it just shows if you just relax and give people time to process what's going on, then when the thing happens that happens, it's so much more impactful. And I just, I love that. I, I, to, to sit there and watch that again after all these years was, was a real joy, as was the whole day. So, you know, that's a very long, rambly, um, review-ish and you know I'm sorry I can't go into detail like I usually would and sorry if I've got any of the pronunciations of the names wrong but it, it literally is you know go to the Ruskin have a very late night get up super early do this as quickly as possible before the first lecture starts at 9 30 in the morning which is you know 15 minutes and it's starting to pick up here now so thanks loads any questions you've got do uh, put them in the comments below and I will answer them tomorrow I'm doing another one tomorrow morning so do comment if you're not here because there's so much more to talk about. I was going to go into the, the uh, dealer stuff that I've seen, but this is long enough anyway, so I'll do that on tomorrow. So if you've got any questions about any of the stuff here, I will be talking about it, and I will be getting some footage today. All right, take care. Thank you so much um, to Russ for allowing me to do this, Russ Stevens, and all of the people at Blackpool Magicians Club, and of course, Blackpool Magic Convention, and have a good one. Like and subscribe, and go now and check out onlinemagic.co. Cheers.